So basically there are two aspects of methotrexate therapy that um, there is space for improvement. One is the toxicity of the drug. So methotrexate is um, commonly used to treat, treat uh, pediatric leukemia. And the young patients, they normally respond very well to methotrexate. The drug works, um, it kills the cancer. However, it is also very toxic in other organs, healthy organs. And especially when we talk about kids being treated with these drugs, we really try to, to reduce toxicity as much as we can. The, the developmental issues that these kids will deal with for the rest of their life sometimes, due to the toxicity of the treatment they get, um, it, it's, a, it's a big issue in the clinic. And we talked with clinicians, we heard the, what are the problems with methotrexate, what, what can we do to improve? And the toxicity in, in the treatment in the, for the pediatric cases was um, immediately uh, brought up. So if we can maybe reduce the dose of methotrexate because we can improve the efficacy, then we can maybe reduce some of the toxicity. So we still don't have the clinical data, but we do have data from mice. And in mice, we were able to increase the efficacy of the drug without increasing um, any toxicity. And we, we looked at the kidney and the liver, which are the two organs that are most hurt by the drug. Um, the gut is also hurt, but I don't think we can do much about that. That toxicity will have to be handled in the ways we do it right now in the clinic. But if we can help toxicities um, of the kidney and the liver, we can already do a lot. And the toxicity in the kidney is a major issue because once the kidney um, becomes non-functional or just uh, less functional, they must stop the treatment. And when they stop the treatment, this is when the prognosis also goes down. So if we can somehow just improve that side of the treatment, we already are doing a lot because the drug is working. We just need to actually really tweak the problems and make it better for the patients. Um, the other side that we can, we can try and, and help um, are actually not so much in the pediatric case, cases. Um, Metrotrexate is also used in adults with lymphoma. Either primary CNS lymphoma, that is lymphoma um, that is um, growing in the, in the brains, um, or uh, there's other types of lymphomas that in order to try either prevent the lymphoma um, of get, getting into the brain or sometimes as care given after the lymphoma is already diagnosed in the brain, um, they're given methotrexate. The problem there is that not all of the patients will respond. So the patients that don't respond, they get a drug that is pretty nasty. It's not, the quality of life is not fantastic when you get methotrexate, but they don't benefit from it at all. Now right now when a clinician has to make the choice whether or not to give methotrexate, the standard of care will be uh, preventive uh, methotrexate treatment for this lymphoma, but the clinicians have no way to predict which patients will actually respond. So one of the things that we found, and it's, it's also in the paper, is that the histidine degradation pathway um, can also maybe provide us a glimpse of which tumors might respond better. Um, we saw that um, in data from patients, the levels of the enzymes that are active in the pathway can give us some prediction to the response. So what we are now working on, uh, we're working with um, clinicians from, from um, MGH, we try, we're trying to get um, slides of tumors of patients that we have information regarding their response. And we're trying to see if we can, um, by, by a simple um, essay of expression of the enzymes of the acid degradation pathway, try and see if we can predict the response of the patients to the drug. Now, if we'll be able to use um, the histidine integration pathway as a marker for the response, we can help the clinicians choose which patients to treat with methotrexate. And by that, the patients that will respond will still get the same treatment that they get, and it, and it is working, it's a good treatment. But the patients that don't respond, we can channel them to better treatments that will work better for them, which will be helpful.